How you doing this evening? We've had a really big day here. Um, the countertops were installed today and uh, our sink is being installed even as I sit here. Um, so we, we're, by the end of the day, we're going to be somewhere around 90% functional in our kitchen. We'll be able to actually make a meal, wash the dishes. Uh, it's been over five months and so we're, we're looking forward to uh, normalizing just a little bit here. Uh, but I did want to take this break and talk to you a little bit. Um, I'm going to talk just a little bit about the Old Testament um, because there are, oddly enough, um, there are people in the church that think that the Old Testament doesn't have any value and um, I view it more as a history book. And uh, it, very seldom will anybody stand up and say, hey, it doesn't have any value. But but I hear things like, oh, you know, that was a law. We're not under the law. Uh, you know, the uh, now we're under mercy and grace. And and uh, they, they were nice lessons, but they don't apply to us. And so scripture would seem to contradict those ideas. Uh, so let's relax for a few minutes. Let's open up our Bibles. I'd like you to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And in chapter 10, um, Paul is talking to the Corinthian church. This is a rough letter for Paul to write. They've got some problems. There's tension. Uh, it's, it's soaked in grace. Um, but the, the Corinthian church has struggled. They've struggled with pride and arrogance and um, tolerance towards sin and, and a number of issues. And um, so in chapter 10, Paul is talking about uh, the fact that the Jews stumbled while they were in the wilderness. And uh, he talked about how they stumbled, but they did. They turned away from God and uh, how God disciplined them. Um, and, and then it says this in verse 6 of 1 Corinthians 10. Now, these things took place as examples for us. And of course, he's talking about the things that occurred. Uh, occurred in the Old Testament. They took place as examples for you and me, that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not be idolaters as some of them were, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. They're talking about uh, very debaucherous parties and that sort of thing. Verse 8, we must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did. And 23,000 fell in a single day. There's a penalty for that. We must not put Christ to the test, as some of them did, and were destroyed by serpents, nor grumble, as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now, these things happened to them as examples. What Paul is saying is, it doesn't necessarily mean if you're going to grumble that, that you're going to be destroyed by the destroyer, but you shouldn't grumble that, that, that you know, there are consequences for doing these things. And, and we see them in the Old Testament as an example for us. But they were written down for our instruction, Paul says, on whom the end of ages has come. Um, so th they're there so that we can learn learn what learn about the character and nature of God, learn about how our relationship is supposed to go with God. Um, we we see these things; they're a shadow and a portent of what's happening right now. So they're valuable to us, so that so that we don't go stumbling around in the dark and and doing things that we shouldn't be doing. And then he says this in verse thirteen. Now this is quickly taken out of, uh, frequently taken out of context. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. He's saying, now, they, really what he's saying is, we're no different than they were. They, we have the same temptations they do to turn our back on God, to idolize the wrong things, to make God a second or third or fourth priority in our lives. And he said, that, that's what happened to them. And But for us, it says, God is faithful and he will not let you, the church, use plural, be tempted beyond your ability, but with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. And what Paul is saying is he's given you a way to combat the temptations that they didn't have. And that's the indwelling Holy Spirit. It's the full counsel of the Word of God. We have the whole Bible. They didn't have it. They were still learning who God was. They were still learning how to relate to him, still learning how how that they, they, they go back and forth with him. Uh, we have the benefit of the full counsel of God. We have the benefit of the Holy Spirit to help us turn away from those temptations that caused the people in the Old Testament to stumble. So 
if we're not familiar with the Old Testament, we don't know why they stumbled. We don't know what the consequences were. So the Old Testament is there to teach us the character and nature of God so that we can utilize the tools that he's given us, the, the entire Bible, the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit, and the knowledge of our Savior, Jesus Christ, to stand against those things that would tear us down and ruin our testimony. Let that bless you. Hey, I love you. I miss you. Have a great night.